We are recording. Great. All right. Welcome to Bible study. This Bible study is, of course, on the Psalms and wisdom literature. And this is our first night. Uh, we're going to have an introduction to the Psalms, and we're going to talk about uh, praise Psalms tonight. So um, if you would, let's start with a word of prayer. I'm going to pray for us, and then we're going to get jump right in. So let's pray. Gracious God, as we study tonight um, on a completely new medium to many of us, um, we thank you for the technology that allows us to go ahead and have these meetings. We ask, Lord, that you let the technology work, <laughs> and that tonight, even though we're not together, we're still together. We can see each other, we can talk to one another, and most important, we can study your scriptures. And may your scriptures, O oh God, penetrate our heart, minds, and souls, so that after we leave here tonight, we might know you better and serve you more. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so tonight we're going to start with talking about the Psalms, and, and what we're going to do first is kind of go through an overview of the Psalms. Uh, I can get my, my notes up here. Great. So I'm going to actually share my screen with you. You don't have to do anything, okay? But you should be seeing now a PowerPoint that says, has the, has the title slide on it, Psalms, Words We Speak to God and Wisdom, Things We Learn from God. Do you see that? Does everybody shake their head? Yes. Okay, great. So one of the things we're going to be looking at over the next, four, uh, next uh, five weeks, actually, the first five weeks of the study, are different types of psalms. So psalms are, the, are, the book of psalms is made up of 150 individual hymns, okay, individual prayers. So, so think of it this way. Uh, all of us at one point or another, back when we used to have things like hymnals in the pews, um, because in, since COVID we haven't had them, <laughs> but think about your hymnal. You, you say, I have a hymn book, right? But in your hymnal, there are hundreds of individual songs. Now, they don't necessarily go all together. Like, I mean, you know, some songs are about salvation, and some are about Jesus, and some are about creation. But you put them all together, and you make a hymn book. That's what the collection of Psalms is. Psalms is 150 individual prayers, songs, writings that have been pushed together to provide, well, most scholars think, provided for Israel's uh, prayer book. And so for, for us, well, the reason we're going to study Psalms is I love the idea that Psalms speak for us. So one of the things that really intrigues me is how do we speak to God? Because sometimes, I want you to think about this in your own life. Sometimes when you speak to God, you say, God, thank you. I love you. You're awesome, right? And sometimes you go, God, things aren't working out. <laughs> and sometimes it's even, God, what's wrong? Why is the world like this? If you haven't done that during COVID, you should have. But one of the things the Psalms do is they provide honest words to God. They encompass all of our feelings and our emotions. I probably don't do that. So what are Psalms? Psalms are hymns that convey the depth the deep levels of human emotion. They include prayers and songs that convey these emotions, such as praise, lament, thanksgiving, and worship. So when you think about this book, this book we call the book of Psalms, and you read them, I encourage you to think about them as a song you might sing, a prayer you might pray, and really think about what they what what they 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 say, what they say to God specifically. That's really really important as we go through tonight. Who wrote them? I'll let you answer that. So please unmute and talk to me. Who 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 wrote some of the Psalms? 
Go ahead and unmute David. and talk to David. me. Yes. David wrote some. Absolutely, he did. Yes. Who else wrote some psalms? Okay, not everybody has to answer at once. Well, David is the only one we know. <laughs> well, that's okay, too. Well, one thing you're going to learn tonight is that you, David wrote some psalms. We know that uh, there's worship leaders in the Bible, uh, Korah, Asaph. We know that Moses wrote psalms. Solomon has psalms. Um, the two men named Heman and Ethan write some of the psalms. And there's actually 34 psalms that don't even have any author listed. There's a lot of people who wrote psalms. Now, again, we typically say the psalms were written by David. And, and, and while some of them were, and a great majority of them were, not all of them, okay? So um, the ones we're going to look at tonight, some of them are written by David and some of them aren't. Uh, the first one we're going to look at in depth tonight is written by David. But they're not all written by David. And so be, be aware of that. Now, the way we're going to break these down, there's 150 of them, okay? Now, there's 151 if you look in, the, in the, uh, the, Greek, the Greek translation of the Bible. But most Protestant Bibles, like our own, most of us carry, have 150 psalms. There is no way in five weeks we're going to do all 150 psalms. Be thankful for that. Say thank you, Scott, for not making us read all 150 psalms in four weeks. So what we've done is, what I've done is break them down into some categories. And that way we can each week sort of look at a category. You got my syllabus in an email. You also got it from, from Pam when you signed up for the class. And in that syllabus, <clears throat> excuse me, in that syllabus, there are psalms listed for each of these categories and and i would really encourage you to to take a look at those each week if you have time beforehand um it's really important to have looked at some of them again i'm only picking about six or seven psalms per week we're only going to look at a couple here but it's important for you to see them or once you come to class go back and look at some of them once you hear the pattern and what you're looking for and one of the beautiful things about Psalms is as we talk about them and you go back and read them, there are certain things that will jump off the page at you that will literally just go, oh my gosh, I hadn't seen that before. And it makes them very, very powerful. So those five categories, uh, first one we're going to look at tonight is praise Psalms. And we're going to look at those in just a few minutes. Next week, we're going to look at royal Psalms. So these are Psalms that were used at the coronation of a king. Um, they were used at festival time, and, and one of the cool things about the Royal Psalms is they're going to be picked up by New Testament authors to talk about Jesus. So we're going to talk about that a little bit next week. Then you have a group of Psalms called Lamentations or Laments. A lament is, oh God, things are terrible. God, why is this happening to us? And again, there are some people who will, who will tell you, we all have friends. Every one of us have friends from other churches, other denominations who say, oh, you should never say that to God. Everything is fine. You know, if it's bad, God, God meant it for it to be bad. You know, I mean, we hear all these things all the time. Look, I, I, I really struggle with that. I think there is a place for us to look at God and say, why? Why, God? Why is this happening? Why? Why, why are these things in the world happening? And right now, lament is on the mind of so many of us. I, am, I lament that we are not in person for this. I, I would I, I love to see your faces, but I would sure love to be in person with you right now. So laments give us words to express frustration, anger, hurt, sorrow. And so we're going to look at those in a couple of weeks. Then another set of psalms is called Thanksgiving psalms, and, and these, um, these are really cool. Some of these are the ones that many of us have in our homes, the you know, plaques and things we get like Hobby Lobby and stuff. A lot of them are going to be from Thanksgiving psalms, and we're going to look at a lot of those on Thanksgiving week. 
And then we're going to use the wisdom psalms to transition into wisdom literature. So the back half of this course, and maybe, the, maybe we'll be back in person by then, but the back half of this course, we're going to look at the wisdom literature, things like so, uh, uh, Proverbs, Song of Solomon, Ecclesiastes. We're going to look at these things that provide wisdom. And we're going to look at the Psalms about wisdom, and that's going to lead us in to a com bigger conversation about wisdom literature. And that's going to be the back half of this course. That's why we, the first half is called the words we speak to God. And then from wisdom, we are going to have the things we learn from God. So that's how those play, play together. Okay. All right, let's talk about praise psalms for a minute. Praise psalms follow a pattern. Every praise psalm has an introduction, a call to worship. So a way to gather the people in an opening line and, and say something that gets people fired up, gets them to understand why are we even praising God? What's the point? That's what the, the you, every one of these will have an introduction. Then they'll go and they'll talk about the motive. So not only, hey, we should praise God, but then they'll go and they'll talk about why should we praise God? What has God done that means that God is deserving of praise? Okay, so intro, God be praised. Motive. This is why God should be praised. And then they'll always come back at the end with a, what they call recapitulation, which is a renewed call for praise. So God deserves praise. Here's why. Hey, don't forget, God deserves praise. Almost all the praise psalms follow this very, very important pattern. And, and one of the cool things about the praise psalms, and it's one of the reasons I like to start with them when I teach psalms, is that because they're a pretty simple pattern, you can look at a praise psalm and you can go, okay, this is what they're thinking about. So the opening line, you know, again, of Psalm 8, O Lord, O Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Perfect. And then it goes through, why is your name majestic? And so you can, you can read that. We're going to read that psalm here in a moment. But you can read it and you can go, oh. Here's what the psalmist was looking at, thinking about what the, what the psalmist is feeling. And that's why he wants, to praise, he wants to praise God. And then at the end, one of the neatest parts of that is the call then that, that the psalmist says, okay, so not only do you praise God now for this, but you should praise God. Usually it has the word continually, forever, some kind of, hey, it's not just praise today, but praise for a longer period of time. So what I thought we would do for tonight is keep it kind of pretty simple, and we're going to look at probably the best, uh, probably the best example of a praise psalm, and that's Psalm 8. So before I get to Psalm 8, any questions or thoughts? Can everybody hear me? Everybody good? Follow along okay? Any thoughts, questions, or comments? Again, I'm learning how to do a Zoom Bible study too, so please bear with me. This is brand new for me. Um, it's weird not having your energy in the room. I'm just going to be honest with you. Uh, it's good to see your face, though. I appreciate seeing them. Okay. All right. One last thing before we go into Psalm 8. I need to talk to you about God's name. This will be important tonight, but it'll be really, really important next week. So when you look at your Bible, this is a little bit of a Bible uh, translation thing. Sometimes you will see God, G-O-D, as it's shown on the screen, uh, right here. And sometimes you will see the Lord. And the Lord will always be capitalized. Those are two different words. God, in Hebrew, like a generic just... Oh, God, like the God of the heavens, the God of this, the God of that. That word is Elohim, okay? And that's important because there's a group of Psalms right in the middle that all use the term 
Elohim, for God. So they were clearly written by a certain group of people. Now, everything that has David's name has the other name for God, and that's Yahweh. Okay? You'll remember where we first learn about Yahweh, and that is in Exodus. You remember when, when the burning bush, when Moses says, God, you have to tell me your name. If I'm going to go to those people, I've got to know your name. And God says, I am who I am. Well, in Hebrew, that's actually a four-letter thing. We call it the tetragrammon. yod heh vav -Hey is what it is in, in Hebrew, and it means Yahweh. Yahweh is God's proper name. Okay, so if I was to say, um, so at Elk City United Methodist Church last Sunday, the preacher uh, told a story. The preacher is, it's a noun. You know who that is, right? But if I was being specific, like Yahweh, I would say, Pastor Ben or Pastor Scott preached on. Does that make sense? The way it was described to me, and I love this analogy, is if God had a nameplate on his desk, it would be Yahweh. <laughs> okay? Like my nameplate would say Scott Rogers. God's plate would say Yahweh. Now, I say that to you because that name is so important in Jewish thought. Incredibly important. Even today, there are many, uh, many uh, Jewish scholars and, and really even, even practicing Jews who will not use that name. Yahweh is so holy that when you see it in scripture, you'll read the word Adonai, which is Lord. So you may have heard the word Adonai. Sometimes it's listed in scripture, but Yahweh is so important that you get to a point and say, you see, you know, an Adonai said instead of Yahweh said, because Yahweh is so important. Part of that is God is, to, to, and, and you got to think about it. And it's important because think about the feelings of something being so important that you don't want to dare mispronounce his name. You don't want to dare mispronounce uh, or say it wrong or use it wrong. Remember the whole, I mean, again, commandment number two, do not take the Lord's name in vain, right? Or number three, actually, commandment number three. Well, they were so concerned about not taking the Lord's name in vain, they don't, they don't use the name Yahweh. They'll write it, and they'll go to the text, and they'll see it, and they'll know what it is, but they will actually say out loud, Adonai, instead of Yahweh. So you'll see that when you read this um, next week, that becomes very important, okay? But I wanted to go over it now because you will see it tonight, all right? Any thoughts or questions on that? Okay. Good. Let's, uh, let's do a little reading. Psalm 8. So please open your Bibles to Psalm 8. And I, I was going to, I had a slide in, I forgot to show you the slide, but please have your Bibles out, be ready, because I will call on you, this is a Bible study, and I would like, just like if we were live, I'm going to have people read. Um, so somebody, take a risk, and uh, unmute yourself, and read Psalm 8, please. I'm going to mute myself for a moment, and listen to you read Psalm 8. Lord, our Lord. How majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens through the praise of children and infants. You have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. I would invite you wherever you are, um, you're welcome to stay muted, or I would love for you to unmute. And let's, let's all read that first line together. Oh Lord, our Lord, 
how majestic is your name in all the earth. Let's do that one more time. One, two, three. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Isn't that beautiful? I love that. Uh, and I, I found a really cool picture. That's what you see on your screen now to go with that. So let's look at the parts. So remember, we talked about each praise psalm has parts. Well, let's, let's break this psalm down and let's look at its parts. So the introduction, that first verse, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Okay, you see how that's a call. We should praise God. Your name is majestic. We just talked about that, right? How majestic the name of the Lord is. And what we're talking about is the psalmist is setting us up the psalmist is setting us up for what's coming. There's some reason that we should praise God's majestic name. Now, if you were writing this psalm, again, go ahead and unmute if you'd like to. I'd love for you to answer. If you were writing this psalm and I said to you, okay, why should God's name be glorified? What, what is, why is God's name majestic? What would you say? What are some reasons you would give? He's the creator. Creator. Good. That's a good one. What else? Any other reasons that you would say God's name is majestic? What about your own life? Where have you seen God's majesty? Gotcha. Where have you seen God's majesty in your own life? Our children. Children, yeah. The yeah. Swiss Our families. Alps. Say again. The Swiss Alps. Ah, the Swiss Alps. That's a great one. Yeah, nature. I absolutely think that's right. The uh, Oklahoma the sunsets. Ah, the yeah. Oklahoma sunset. Yeah, especially out here in western Oklahoma. Beautiful sunsets. The reality is, is that we all have something that makes us drawn to God's majesty. Now, it's not always going to be the same for everybody. Again, the Swiss Alps and the Oklahoma sunset, that's a long way away from each other, okay? Completely different terrain. All right, let's just call it that. Completely different places. But I can see the beauty in both those, couldn't you? Our children and grandchildren, look, I'm just being honest. Everybody thinks theirs is the cutest. <laughs> They're not. Just call what it is. But I can see Jen. She's already given me the evil eye on that one. But, but you know, they, they, you, you, you see uh, uh, your kid or your grandkid, and you're just like, oh, my gosh. How beautiful. Or, or maybe, maybe you're doing a, a, your job at your work, and you see someone get it. Like you're, 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 you're in the middle of something. You're like, oh, people, somebody goes, oh my gosh, I understand. I mean, you listen to teachers, a lot of teachers. My sister's a teacher and, and, and I've I got teachers in my family. I know many of you do. And, and, and you'll hear a story and, you know, sometimes school can be really hard, but then there's that one student, they finally got it today. And there's this joy that overcomes you. And it calls you to remember God's majesty, his majesticness. So the psalmist does the same thing. So the psalmist says, Lord, oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And then the psalmist goes on and says, here's why I think God is majestic. And so let's take a look at what that is. It's Psalm 8, verses 2 through 8. From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise. Your enemies will be silenced. I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars. What is man that you are mindful of them? Think about the fish of the sea, the birds of the air and the flocks and the herds. And you see all the things that, that the psalmist says, this is why God has great majesty. Look at all the things that God has his hands on, that God has his fingers on. 
And the psalmist says, we ought to praise God for that. We need to give God all the glory and all the honor and all the praise for all the things that God does. Now, I remember as a kid, little kids in, you know, in kids Sunday school and kids Bible study and things like that, we would talk about, we would have things like God's sightings. And, and our leader would say, where did you see God this week? And some, would, some people would say, I saw him, God, you know, and my mom, or I saw my God playing with my puppy, or I saw my God, I saw God outside. And all those reasons matter to us. And the psalmist gives us words for how to say that. God, you are so majestic. Well, how do I say that to God? How do, how do, I, how do I say that in a way that, that, that conveys the depth of emotion, the depths of my soul? Well, the psalmist gives us some words. And one of the things that Israel, in Israel's history, when they would go to worship, is in a time of praise, they would pull out one of these praise psalms, and they would sing it, pray it, they'd read it together, someone would read it for them, and they would say all of these things. And I can just imagine that worship leader coming back and saying, okay, now you add to that a little bit. What would you say? How do you, what is your motive for praising God? If God's name is majestic, why is God's name majestic to you? Just like I asked you at the beginning. The Psalms speak for us. They give our emotions words. And then they end with the recapitulation. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. A reminder. So your name is majestic. Here's why your name is majestic in all the earth. I love Psalm 8. It's beautiful. If you ever just need a, a, a psalm to go to, when you don't know what else to say, you're, you're in awe of God. Something has happened and you're just like, wow. God, that's amazing. And you don't have the words. Psalm 8 will give you some beautiful words to say to God. Very, very powerful. Very powerful words. Any thoughts on Psalm 8? Questions? Thoughts? I didn't know there was so much in it when I read it the first time on my own. Good, this, good. This really pulls it together. I'm looking forward to going back and reading the other ones now that I know how to analyze sure. it. Yes. Well, and, 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 and look, that's the reason we do this. Uh, look, I, I mean, there's a formula. But part of that for me is seeing and being able to break that down, Carol, just like you said. And being able to pull out and go, oh, I see how that works in the broader scheme of things. And that's what, the, again, that's what the Psalms do. Now, all, all, not all the Psalms follow the same pattern. And we're going to go over five different patterns, actually. And they don't always all, you know, just like everything else. There's always exceptions, exceptions to the rule. But, Carol, you're right. I, I encourage you to do that. In fact, you're going to get the chance. All of you are going to get the chance here in just a minute to do that. Any, any, any other commentary on Psalm 8? Okay. Let's go to another song. Let's look at one. Let's look at another one together. Can you hear me? Yes. Did somebody have a question? Uh, yeah. Can you hear Doug? me? Yes, I can, Doug. Go ahead. What, what uh, version Bible are you using? I, we're using the, the New King James. Great. He uses the word excellent instead of majestic. So. Oh, well, and, and again, those are translation issues. I don't really care what version you use. I'm using NIV tonight. Um, but sometimes you can see kind of a bigger picture by understanding those two words. So majestic and excellent. I actually like the way those work together, actually. Mm -hmm. um, for me, those are really powerful together. Mm -hmm. um, because they, they highlight bigness and greatness of God. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, don't, don't be afraid of that. In fact, if, you, if we read something and it's different for you, 
I want you to speak up because I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, when, when we study, when I, when I studied Old Testament in seminary, that was one of the things that every professor taught us was, when you see an English translation and there's a different word used, majestic or excellent in this case, mm -hmm. always pay attention to that because that's a Hebrew word that we either can't translate or it's one that has multiple meanings. Right. And that actually, to me, that actually expands my understanding of God when I think about excellent or majestic. They're not exactly the same word, but boy, they convey bigness and greatness and incredibleness, which is what I think that psalm is actually about. Now, Good pickup. This particular psalm, uh, there's a song that goes along with the, the first verse. Uh, yes. That we, that we used in, uh, in some of our meetings. Majestic instead of majestic. Didn't There's a yeah. We actually have uh, one. We have a song that's in our hymnal called Majesty, mm. and uh, we sing that one a lot actually. And and mm -hmm. it's interesting because in that particular hymn, we're actually it's a hymn about Jesus. But you can see how all that can, how that links that word majesty, majestic links here. And 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 again, we believe as Christians that Jesus was there since the beginning. So. That's, that's a beautiful way of understanding creation, understanding, again, the greatness, the bigness, the, the far-reachingness of God. Uh, what Good translation are you using? NIV. NIV? Uh -huh. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, yep. Yeah. All right. Good, good pickup. Let's go to 150, the last psalm in the, in the, in the psalms. And we're going to do this one again together. So there's an introduction and call, Psalm 150, the first, first verse. Uh, somebody else, if you would, read Psalm 150. It's not very long. Somebody take a risk and unmute and read for us. I read that. Praise you, the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Somebody better say amen to that. <laughs> yeah. That's a beautiful psalm. Yes, it is. Yes. Think about that opening. It's just simple. Praise the Lord. All right. Why should I praise the Lord? What's the motive? Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise him in the heavens. Praise his power. Praise his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sound of the flute and the horn and the harp and the lyre and on and on and on. The cymbals. And then the recapitulation, mm. let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So it's not just you praise the Lord. It's not just, you know, Sarah, Doug, Carol, Vicki, Steve, Sybil, Doug, Jennifer, Scott. It's not just you praise the Lord, but let's expand that. Everything that has breath praise the Lord. See how that works? So it's not just you're praising God. It's everybody praises God. That's a really important piece. A really beautiful, beautiful piece. Mm -hmm. You can do that with any of the praise psalms, pretty much. You can kind of run this and sort of see that. And, and, and again, usually at the recapitulation, that last part, there's going to be some kind of... Um, <clears throat> excuse me, there's going to be some kind of movement into a bigger, in this case, everything, not just you praise the Lord, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. And you're going to see that as, as we, as we go. Any questions? I want us to do one more Psalm. All right. Now we've done two together. We're going to go to Psalm 100. And we're going to do this one together. Because I want to, 
I want to give you the tools. One of the things I believe about Bible study, some of you have taken Bible studies with me. I want to give you tools because I don't want you just to read Psalms today. I want you to read Psalms, the, the book of Psalms, the rest of your life. And I want you to see them and be able to, to enjoy them and let them speak for you. And so to do that, again, it's giving you the tools in the toolbox so that, we, like, like Carol said, you can go back and reread them and go, oh my gosh, I see that now. And that's what I'm hoping to, to teach you tonight. So somebody else, Psalm 100, please. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Amen. Somebody better say amen to that. <laughs> Beautiful stuff. All right, let's do this one together. What's the introduction? Why, what's the praise? Make a joyful noise. Yeah, shout for the Lord, make a joyful noise. Yes, very simple, but, but very direct. If you've noticed, have you noticed that these praise psalms, they don't, they don't start with some flowery thing. It's praise the Lord, do this, do it now. <laughs> you know, there's almost a sense of immediacy. Shout for joy, make a joyful noise, right? They're, they're all, they're, they're commands. This is what you should do. Praise God. Excellent. All right. Tell me why though. What's the motive? Why should we praise God? Why should we shout for joy? Why should we make noise? He's our creator. Okay. He's our creator. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, I love verse, I love, love verse three. It's the one that's on your, on your screen right now. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Mm -hmm. Would, uh, what would is, verse two be part of the intro, the motive? Worship the Lord with gladness, come before him with joyful songs. Yes, probably an extended, yeah. And again, okay. these, there, there's no hard and fast rule. Please know that. There's no hard and fast rules here. Um, just some the way to kind of categorize and put them in some kind of order. But yeah, that'd probably be part of the introduction. Gotcha. But yeah, we are his. We are, we are created by God. What else does it say, though? Where, how, what else is about praise? What else should we be doing? Why should we be doing this? God is good. God is good. Yeah. Again, it's not rocket science. It says it. The Lord is good. <laughs> exactly. We should be happy about that because imagine if the Lord wasn't good. Uh. With that kind of power, I mean, the psalmist, again, we're going to read some other psalms in the next few weeks that are going to talk about God's power. But if God is really as powerful as we think God is and we believe God to be, aren't, you better be glad that God is good. Because if God's not good, that makes for a very dangerous world, a very it's dangerous a existence. Thought. It's a scary thought, isn't it? Sybil, yes. I think you said scary thought. Yeah, 100% scary. All right, and then let's close this. What's the comeback, the recapitulation? What's the, what's the call to praise here? And look at it very closely. It's, it's really interesting. His truth endures to all generations. How long? All. <laughs> all of them. Every how, how long? D Doug, tell me something. How long is all? Complete. <laughs> Why not? How far? How, how, how far is complete? <laughs> you, you, you see how this works? Uh -huh. It's a beautiful ending because it's not just praise you praise or your children praise, but how many generations? All. All generations mm -hmm. throughout time. You see how the psalmist took, started here, praise God. Here's why. And everybody should do it. You see how that, you see how that works? Mm-hmm. That's the way a praise psalm works. And, and the reason, and I'm going to stop sharing now so I can talk to you a little, a little closer for a second. 
That's why when you look at praise psalms, mm -hmm. they can speak for us because they give us ways to not only praise God now, but encourage all persons, everyone, everywhere to praise. It's, in, it's such a part of our worship. You know, it, it's interesting to me, but when, 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 when you take a worship class, so when I was in seminary, we took worship classes. Every worship service, even services of darkness like Tenebrae services, have moments of praise. At least somewhere in there where we acknowledge the goodness of God. Now, that doesn't mean everything is always good. Don't, don't misunderstand it. The psalmist doesn't say, okay, everything's good all the time. Great. Simply says that God deserves praise all the time. That God deserves to be prayed. Say it again, Doug. How, how long? Forever. Forever. All generations. Mm -hmm. Pray. Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Right? All those things. You see how, again, we start with you. Start with me. Start with us on this screen. But it expands. And the beautiful thing about that for me when it comes to the Psalms of praise, all those motives for why, the reason it should start with us is that we get, we, you and I, we see God's fingers at work. We see the hand of God in creation, in our families, you know, in our lives, in our blessings, and all these different places that God has worked in our life. And that's just a glimpse of what God is really doing in all of God's creation, in all of God's world. Mm -hmm. See how that works? Mm -hmm. Praise Psalms are beautiful because they allow us a voice to express our excitement about who God is and to call others to that same excitement. So that's the praise Psalms tonight. I gave you a list of about, I think there's about eight or 10 on there. I would challenge you, um, highly encourage you, pick one of them, pick them all, but go and do this. Work through them. Look at the beginning, look at the end, look at that middle, really break them down and see what the psalmist is saying. And then I really think it's important. I think it's one of the most important things about the psalms is pick one of them. You can pick one that we did, eight. 150 or 100 or pick one of the ones I listed or pick something, pick another one. And I would encourage you sometime this week to make that your prayer and just simply say, God, here's my prayer and read it and give God the praise that God deserves for all that God has done, both for us and for how many, Doug? Forever and ever, all. Oh. There you go. Thank you, all. Oh, absolutely. All right, good stuff. Any any final comments, questions? I I know it's uh, shorter than our normal Bible studies, um, but I do have to go uh, help with the children, and so I'm excited about going and helping to uh, help them uh, exit the building. Twenty third so sounds not bad. Huh? The twenty third. Well, we're gonna. Bad. We're going to talk about the 23rd Psalm, but it actually is, it, it actually falls in a little bit different category. It, it could be a praise Psalm. You're right. Some scholars think it is, but we're going to look at it more as a Thanksgiving Psalm. Well, we will do that one though. Okay. All right. Well, let me pray for us and then I'm going to stop the recording and uh, we're going to call it a night. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the opportunity to study tonight. We thank you for the Psalms. We thank you that they're the words that we speak to you. Oh God, may you fill us, may you fill our hearts and minds with your praise tonight. That praise not only comes from our lips, but praise comes from the lips of everything that has breath. And may we, oh God, be the bearers of that praise right now in your world. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, next week, same time, same link. You'll use this link again. And I'll be on about 6.15, and, and we'll try to, I'll send an email to those that didn't come and see if they're going to join us. Um, the thing we will do tomorrow, just so you know, is we will be sending this out as part of our Thursday email 
for the YouTube channel. So if you want to watch it again, if you want to watch yourself and see what you look like, you could go to the YouTube channel and rewatch this very program. Sim was like, nope. <laughs> um, but this way we, we start developing our content base. So, all right, I got to go. God bless you guys. Have a great night. We'll talk to you later. Thank you. Bye. Bless you. Bye.